Hey, what's going on guys? It's your boy Ryan Tillman here with another episode of Tillman's Take. So today what I want to do is I want to debrief a recent video that actually came to us on July 5th out of Fullerton, California. And what happened on this day was a situation where a 17-year-old girl had taken her parents' car and essentially left and actually was reported missing. Uh, shortly thereafter, she gets contacted by a police officer for driving at a high rate of speed. And then when the traffic stop happens, uh, ultimately there's an officer involved shooting that occurs and, and she unfortunately passes away. So let's watch the video and then we'll come back and debrief it. Ninety-three K shots fired. Shots fired. Show me your Nine fucking hands! Show me your hands! I got suspect down on the freeway. I need medics, please. Get back in the car. Get back. Oh. Yeah, you see the four seventeen on the ground? Gonna be on the east on ninety-one. Don't fucking move. Put your hands out to your side. Don't move. Hey, stay back. Stay back. Stay back. Get back. Roll over on your stomach! Roll over on your stomach! Do it now! Put out your hands to your side! Put your hands out to your side! Hey, you got me covered, partner? Hey, I clear this car. Just hold her. Hold her. I got another LAPD unit with me. Yo, were you with me? Put your hands behind your back. Yeah. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Where you hit, ma'am? Where you hit? Can you help me, please? I know where you hit. My chest. Help me, please, please, help me, please. Hey, we go to my passenger side of my car. There's a med kit right on top of my bag. I'm gonna help you. Hold on a second, okay? Hi, I'm Jake. Can we work on uh, station two for a traffic light? Okay, oh, it's a replica. It's a replica. Yeah, Where's it at? Where's it at? Where's it at? Hand to me. I can't breathe. Hold on a second. 93K, further WC just confirmed that you're code 4. Affirm. Chest, cut that shirt off. Hey guys, so again, uh, I always want to highlight these debriefs are never easy. And the reason they're never easy because anytime we ever have to debrief somebody losing their life, it's never easy. And in this situation, it's a 17 year old girl, very, very young girl. And so I want to start from the very beginning. And one of the things that you guys know I like to do is I like to go back to police case law, police policies, and what we do. You have an officer who's actually driving his canine to go get to the veterinarian to go get checked on. And as he's on the freeway, he sees a vehicle driving 
at a high rate of speed uh, in, Cal in, in violation of the California Vehicle Code. So he subsequently goes to do a traffic stop. And as he does that, she actually intentionally collides into his vehicle. So now you have two things. Not only do you have a vehicle code violation, but you have a possible, you know, uh, assault with a deadly weapon because of, you know, colliding intentionally into an officer using a vehicle can also be classified as assault with a deadly weapon. You know, we don't know that at the time. Obviously, we don't know what intentions are, but it can definitely be perceived that way. So now you have an officer with two th two violations, clear violations of the law. Uh, shortly thereafter, the, the vehicle U-turns and you got to realize this is on a very, very congested freeway, a freeway that just last night I was on and stuck in traffic for about two and a half hours because it's so busy so she does a u-turn on the freeway and now and then parks her car so once she parks her car that officer has to think quickly like how is he going to handle this situation and that has to happen very quickly because you have oncoming cars if you noticed in the video the cars kept going there were no cars that were stopped yet and that just kind of tells you how fast this incident evolves so he runs out of his car and he goes around the driver's side now i don't know i was not the officer in this situation but there's a lot of things that can be running through his mind did this girl take off or it, who knows he may not even know it was a female at the time but did this person in the car run out of that car and run to a place that he doesn't know about is she still in the vehicle is she out of the vehicle he doesn't know but he circles around to try to figure out where she's at now again i'm not here to talk about tactics because you know there's always things that we can do as officers that, you know, maybe we can improve tactically, maybe not, who knows, but he goes around because he knows he has to figure out and figure the situation out quickly. When he comes around the corner, he sees a female standing in a shooting stance pointing what looks to be a fire a firearm at him. And just that quickly, an officer involved shooting occurs. She drops down to the ground and now we have to figure out, okay, what now? So... What this officer does, which I I applaud him so much because what you guys don't realize, one of the hardest things for us to do is to get into a shooting and then immediately switch our mind to, okay, now I have to save this person. Because think about it, psychologically, I went from looking for a person and trying to affect a, to affect some type of you know enforcement on somebody to now I have to save this person's life. That's very, very hard to do, but I can tell you we try to train and do it. And this officer's actions, I, I, I would say, you know, kind of work out flawlessly from the standpoint is he gets out a medical kit not only does he get the medical kit out but he also applies a tourniquet he also applies so many different other medical equipment in efforts to save this person's life now one of the questions we get and it comes up often is why do we still handcuff people when we shoot them and i know it looks so bad especially because you would think you know after shooting somebody why are we trying to handcuff them you know they're no longer a threat well i've shown you guys recent videos and i can show you video after video that even though we shoot somebody shoot somebody it doesn't necessarily mean the threat is over let's take a look at the last video that we i just mentioned a few weeks ago or a couple days ago when we had the man that was in an officer involved shooting and it was a suicide by cop that officer shot him a few times and yet he still got back up and was able to grab a hold of the other officer and put him in a chokehold so the officers will go and put handcuffs on a person to secure them so that way they at least know that the threat is now secure but as soon as they do that he now has to switch his mindset to render raid to this person and that's exactly what he he does now unfortunately the uh she ends up passing away later on at the hospital but a few things to consider in this situation this is potentially another suicide by cop situation did that officer know that when he was going to do a traffic stop on for the just the speeding violation? He probably didn't know that. Did he know that when she turned around way, turned around on the freeway? He probably didn't know that. And the saddest thing about this whole situation is when it was all said and done, when they recovered that firearm, they realized it was a BB gun. But do you think that that officer knew that it was a BB gun when she was pointed at him? Of course not. I've done recent posts, and if you look back on our on our timeline, you'll see a post where I actually compare two different guns. One is a gun that I actually own, and there's another gun that's a BB gun, and they look almost identical. So now you put a situation where you're pointing that you know fake firearm in the face of somebody. How do you tell if that's a fake firearm? You can't. They actually compared that weapon that she used or pointed at the officer with the real same gun, and it looks identical. There's no way that you can tell that this is a fake firearm. The way they used to make fire arms they put the little yellow or orange tip on the end of it you were kind of able to tell a fake firearm for a real firearm well those days are long gone there's a reason why criminals will use fake firearms in the commissions of crimes like burglaries robberies because they know if they get caught at the end of the day they have a fake firearm so it's a little bit better for them when it comes to the charges that they're going to get stuck with 
this officer did a good job from the standpoint of he kept his composure, he stayed calm, he tried to render aid, he didn't just stand there and just, you know, wonder what next, he actually reacted. Unfortunately, that, that young lady lost her life, and I wish we could have done something to help her. It sounds like she was suffering from depression. I actually listened to the phone calls that came in for the call for service, and the dad says she suffers from anti, she, she's on antidepressants because she suffers from depression. Those are things to consider, but those aren't facts that that officer knows at the time. So if you look at the case law, if you look at the policy, the officer's trying to affect an arrest, he's trying to overcome some resistance, and he's trying to prevent an escape. When you have those three things on board, that officer can use reasonable force. And in this, in this situation, I would say it was reasonable because that officer had no way of thinking or no way of knowing that this was a, a real firearm when she pointed at him. If you look at the freeze frames that we've actually going to show you on our screen, you can see clearly that she takes a position as if she's trying to shoot at an officer. I don't know about you, but that's a hard call to make. So, you know what, guys? Here's another Tillman's take. I hope that you guys take this information, not as me, Monday morning quarterback, because this is not what it is at all, but just more of education of why we as officers make certain decisions that we do and how we can react or not react in situations like this. Thanks again, and God bless, guys.